so I put together this very brief presentation kind of just to start structuring that, that discussion. Um, maybe to begin with, a, a comment, which is what we've seen is, thanks to Tanya and Selwyn, a nice view of a biodiversity informatics institution based in government. Uh, we got the beginnings of a second example of that from Jorge. We're going to see more of that, I think, this afternoon and tomorrow morning. So we have two good, successful examples of essentially achieving this challenge from within government. Then Chris gave us an example of achieving this challenge from within academia. And now we start to get a view of a very different solution from Kriya, which is doing this challenge independent. And you know, my own view of Kriya, after more than a decade of association with them, is that they started out with some very clear principles, ideas about how data and tools should be developed, that data should always be open, that the most fundamental and highest quality data should be the target of your activities, things like that. And they developed some very circumscribed but very useful and successful early products. And so it, it's kind of a Lord of the Rings sort of situation where you have these, this very small institution when, uh, making its way amongst these very big institutions that can be very powerful, very vengeful, very negative. And yet, in some sense, Kriya holds the ring of power, which is honest, solid data and information. So very interesting, very novel, and I can attest having, having been friends and colleagues for, for a decade or so, also very stressful and very, um, th there's no moment at which Kriya as an institution and its directors, Vanderle and Dora and Sydney, have been able to sit back and relax. <laughs> and, you know, you never know who your next enemy is. It's very strange, but at the same time very successful. So, it's, it's an interesting additional example. So anyhow, let's, let's just start to think all together about what we're learning. Um, there's quite a bit of importance here as far as strategy. You know, I think one thing that we've, that we've talked about in the last few days is you don't just jump in. You know, there's this, this phrase from Nike which is, just do it. Well, no. It's a very complex field. You have to know where to start, where to invest your time, what partnerships to build, and what partnerships to avoid. And rather, we have to construct a very carefully thought out path towards the goals that are really out there on the horizon. Uh, I couldn't resist adding this in. You know, if Rome was built in a day, well, these guys would have used that con contractor, which is to say, if there were an easy way to do it, everybody would be, use that, that protocol. There is no easy way. I think you all have appreciated that in the course of these examples. So here's another of my institutes, right? Everything in Biodiversity Institute. And notice that it's new and improved. Notice that it has a large charismatic um, thing that everybody's going to say, oh, how cute, right? Or how beautiful. And what does my institute do? It does biodiversity discovery, systematics and taxonomy, data capture, analysis, conservation, prioritization, and policy. Oh, and sustainable development as well. <laughs> so support us now, but notice this. It was just established, which is to say I just invented it on my computer there. But it's an institute. That's not the way to do things, right? Remember, limited circumscribed goals? That's the whole field, or almost the whole field. 
initial products that sell the organization? No, I don't have anything except my picture of the lion and the assertion that it's new and improved. Okay, so it's just, just things to think about as far as the strategy. A really important point is to assess the situation before you start. What are the opportunities? We've talked about building on existing institutions. We've talked about building on existing data or building off of already uh, successful projects. But it really has to respond to real and present needs in the community. You know, essentially, the worst situation is when you have a hammer and I'm looking for nails, right? No, it should be, I have a loose board on the outside of the building. What are the tools that I need to fix that problem? So what is the community? That's part of this strategy. Is it government? Is it conservation NGOs? Is it academia? Is it public health institutes? Is it municipal authorities? Who are you talking to? And what do they need? Do they need data? Right? GBIF, for example, was conceived as a data infrastructure. So one thing that I wrestle with, Chris wrestles with, a lot of people wrestle with, is why are they trying to do policy? Does the community need processed information? Maybe your minister doesn't want to see 1.2 million primary biodiversity data records. Your minister just says, where do I put this reserve? Or do I let them do this activity of development doesn't want the data. The science community doesn't want the processed information because scientists are trained not to believe anybody, right? But the minister doesn't want the data because he or she does not have the time to pay attention to that. Other user communities want very different things. So remember this principle of achievable goals. All of these presentations will be in your hands by the end of the week, so don't worry about writing things down. But we, we've talked about these things. Limited sets of goals, strategic sets of goals so that they respond to the needs of the community. Essentially satisfy the users. Satisfy that initial target community or small number of communities. A couple successes early on is much more important than giving that spectrum of we do everything. Essentially become indispensable. That's what CREA did. In spite of all of those enemies and all of those other interests and all of those big institutions, CREA became indispensable. VertNet became indispensable. And obviously, you've got to have your eye on the long term. Where am I really going? What am I really trying to achieve? And I have to make sure that I don't invest in something that isn't scalable and extendable to get me to that goal. I think this is the last of my preaching. No smoke and mirrors. Um, never, ever, ever hold data back, okay? First of all, because it reflects pretty poorly on your principle of open access, but also because it, you know, we talked about uh, stable, credible, neutral player. It kind of reflects on your organization as, as whether it's honest or not. Um, open information and open data. We've talked about that ad infinitum. Real, concrete, well-documented well information. So in my institute, this thing that I just created five minutes ago, haven't done any of this. So I think 
rather than falling in this temptation of the big announcement, it's got to be much more of a strategic process. So, Just to kind of, we can come back to this document later. But I've been jotting down little bits of wisdom up here on the board. And then I started to categorize them. This is nothing final. Maybe we can, maybe we can put this up on the screen as we do our discussions this afternoon and more intensively into tomorrow. But. Um, essentially some thinking about overall goals, some thinking about what the data should look like and what the data philosophy should be like and other activities that should, um, should be in our thinking. So this is nothing final. It's just something you, know, you guys can add to. I'm certain I've forgotten things. You can change the categorization. That may help. Okay? But just kind of start thinking about this. Start thinking about how do we design the institution. That's up here in this first, um, this first category. And what should the currency of our institution be? And we don't want to get too big. We don't want to take on too much. But some of these, these other activities can be pretty important. You know, as Vanderlei said, if I may paraphrase, Vanderlei is not a spring chicken, right? None of us is. I mean, too much gray up here. But if Kriya isn't looking 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the line, at which, at which point Vanderlei would be over 100, and I would be 90, it dies. And it's not just a matter of preserving the data, but the institution should not be smoke and mirrors. And so how do you prioritize the important elements of that institution or Conabio in Mexico or Sanbi, and how do you make sure it's not dependent only on Tanya or only on Selwyn or only on one particular minister or on one particular presidential administration. Uh, we have a colleague at KU who talks about the bus test. And so here's, here's the, this is a great example because Chris is wearing his cycling jersey, which is to say he was on his bike all weekend around Cape Town. Chris talked to us about KU Biodiversity Institute as an institution in biodiversity informatics. Well, what would have happened or what would happen if Chris got on his bike and the city bus is driving down the street, Chris is right there and <laughs> so Chris is dead. Most of the Biodiversity Institute would break into song. <laughs> 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 but, it, but it's a serious test of an institution. Does KU Biodiversity Institute go back to just being a systematics group, a museum? Or is there some continuity? You know? Each one of these people that you're hearing from, I wouldn't wish anything ill on Tanya, uh, Chris sometimes, but usually not. Each one of these institutions needs to think about that bus test. We could all step off the curb at the wrong moment and be flattened, right? A bolt of lightning. Does the institution survive? Or at least, do the important parts of the institution survive? And if you look around the, the um, landscape, which I talked about yesterday, some of those institutions are the function of single personalities and might not survive. 
So it's just something to think about. Maybe I'll add that to the overall goal. Survivability, you know, the bus test. So, so I just wanted to take 10 minutes and give you a little bit of at least where I'm seeing the lessons from this. And if you guys think of things that I've left out, you know, please raise your hand, let's talk about them, let's add them in. Um, and over the next couple of days, let's, let's play with this list or some, some other version of it. Feel completely free to take this and reorganize it or throw it out and redo something, something better. Okay, but let's talk about it. Any questions at this point? Chris. So, I, are we open to suggestions on what to add now? Of course. Right. So, somewhere in there, on their overall goals, it is I would put in the five things that I talked about. The, what would be the measure of success, say five years down the road? Does it have, um, so an overall goal would be make it long. In other words, and I think you are hinting at that. Don't repeat what others are doing. Is it unique? Is it long? Wait a minute, you said five. Yeah. Well, that's the fifth. <laughs> Novelty, effectiveness, significance, transferability, and endurability. Ah, so these are the measures of success. Measures of, but in many ways, those should be part of parcelizing. Uh, yes, five, yeah, of the goals. And I think many of your goals encompass those uh, measures. So, for example, survivability, the bus test is, will it be endurable? Right. Or does the success of the institution rest on one individual? The one, pro if the prophet dies, does the religion die? <laughs> yes, sir. One thing I just made explicitly is the value proposition, you know, which is the thing that as Chris mentioned earlier, the 32nd, the, the ability to easily convey what the value is of investing and working in this particular institution. So essentially sound bites that summarize value. Yes, to the, to the, to the target audience. Okay, good, yes. don't have to finish this today. Let's do one more with Jean, and then we'll take some tea and move on to, to sell one. In some countries, like in, in mine, we may have a lot of work to do on biodiversity. Uh, yes, <laughs> to maintain, uh, to, to work on all the groups. On, uh, mammals, uh, amphibians, and so on. So uh, maybe we then we uh, we have to split into different different group, uh, uh, so that uh, one group will work on mammals, another one will work on uh, pets. And I don't know. Or uh, 
uh, make uh, in different places uh, group working on all the groups mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. animals. I don't know what, what is possible. To so, so is your point about institutions kind of being the right size, not too big, not too small? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So a, kind of appropriate scope of a particular institution, yeah. right? The, is it just birds, just mammals, just vertebrates, just life? Yes, yes, but then we will not have all the work done if we have. Right, right, if it's too big, yeah. then those are not achievable goals. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. So we've gotten just a bit behind, it's only 25 minutes.